What is going on, y'all? Welcome back to my YouTube channel. Here in today's video, I will be discussing and giving my opinion on why I believe the Wizards need to move on from Scott Brooks at the end of this year or even fire him uh, in the middle of this year. You know, earlier in the year, I saw that there were a lot of rumors that he was on the hot seat and could go. And since then, it's only gotten worse for the Wizards. Granted, I do re I do know that they're, they're dealing with COVID issues right now and are missing a strong part of their team. But still, Scott Brooks just really hasn't been very good. Now he's being paid $35 million a year, which is puts him in the top six and highest paid uh, coaches salaries. So they're definitely giving him a lot of money and not really getting what they deserve. Uh, you know, Wizards haven't been to the playoffs in two years, two and a half or almost three years. Uh, so, you know, you're definitely expecting to make the playoffs with a coach like Scott Brooks who had a ton of success in Oklahoma city um, before being fired then. Um, but, but first off, my, my first main issue with Brooks is the way that the defense has played this year um, earlier in the year before the COVID issues, the wizards were able to produce a ton of points. They were scoring a ton. They were doing a lot of stuff like that, um, getting it done on the offensive end, but they were just losing games defensively bad. You know, it seemed like we watched so many times a guy get a wide open three in the corner and hit it, you know, NBA players make threes and the Wizards were just leaving guys wide open. And as the games went on and it continued to occur over and over again, it started to seem like it wasn't just the players, you know, it, it had to be coaching. You know, they're not changing anything in games and the same issues are occurring. So I'm not exactly sure what was going on in practice, but Scott Brooks wasn't really going after that issue and really trying to stop the three from the corner. Um, and then my second big issue with Brooks and the issues he's had this year is every single game, it seems like that the Wizards are in in the fourth quarter, it just goes away. You know, even there was a time this year they were up, I believe it was against the Bulls, who aren't really that good. They were up 18 plus points in the fourth quarter and ended up blowing the lead. That just can't happen. And it seems like deja vu every time we watch, you know, the Wizards are down four with six minutes left and end up losing by 15 plus. The Wizards are down by two or even up four or up two with single digit minutes to go and Scott Brooks just can't get it done. It really doesn't make sense. And a huge part with that and a huge issue with that is his rotations and the guys he brings in the game and when he holds guys out of the game and stuff like that. Now he's done this much longer than I have. So he knows more than I do, but this year just has not seemed that way. Uh, you know, a lot of very questionable rotations and, that's had a huge part in the losses. You know, he brings certain guys in at the worst times and then we'll bring, pull them out when a guy's hot or when a guy's playing really well or when the game is going in their favor and everything's working, you know, sub guys in and it's like, there was no need for it. I don't really get it. It doesn't make sense to me, but that's just the way he's been all year. And that's one of the big reasons I think he's got to be fired um, or just at the end of this season, because right now it's not looking like they're going to make a playoff push. You know, it's very early on in the season. Uh, so that's understandable, but it's just not looking that way as of right now. Now, I know Bradley Beal, or it's been reported Bradley Beal's a fan of Scott Brooks and likes him, and that's one of the main reasons he's wanted to stay in Washington. Uh, but if he can't win games in Washington, it's got to be time to move on, and Bradley Beal definitely should have say in whatever happens if they're going to keep him. Um, if he asks for a trade, then that wouldn't have to like, we wouldn't have to worry about that. But Bradley Beal is one of the best players in the NBA, and he's definitely the top scorer in the NBA. You know, he's proven it this year. So a guy like him on a team who's won two or three games is just – like, that, that That doesn't make sense. I, I really don't get it. Um, you know, they, they got to get him some help. Russell Westbrook was supposed to be the guy. Um, and going off of Russell Westbrook, Russell Westbrook actually played – for Scott Brooks in Oklahoma city for a while and had a ton of success under him. So when the wizards made the trade for John wall and the first round pick, which I'll get into in a few minutes, um, it really seemed like that was the way to go, I guess, for them. And Russell Westbrook was going to have a ton of success here in Washington. And now it's just not looking like that. Um, Russell Westbrook's probably been playing one of his worst years and it's still very early on. So this isn't like a shot at him. Like I, I still think Russell Westbrook's going to get, back on track and have a ton of success this year, but 
it, it just seems like like if you watch uh, Wizards games on NBC Washington, the commentators just literally are so perfect with, with the way they say, you know, they said Russell Westbrook, the ball and Russell Westbrook's body just are not moving together. You know, one is moving faster than the other or one's moving slower than the other. And that's a big issue. It seems like with him. And that that's just a true fact. You know, it, it's been like that all year and he just hasn't been the same Russell Westbrook we've seen, you know, the first three or four games this year, you know, he put up triple doubles, but he just still like late in the games, forcing shots, getting to the bucket easily to score and then going away from that and trying to give the ball up. It just seems like he's playing too unselfish at times. And then at other times he's playing too selfish. So I don't really get it, but we'll see um, as the season goes on with him. But now moving into Tommy Shepard, the GM who was the interim before being hired as the full-time guy, he's been draft wise. I think he's been pretty good. Um, You know, with Rory Hachimura and Admiral Schofield in 2019, and Denny Avdia and Cassius Winston this year. I really like both those drafts. Admiral Schofield didn't turn out to what I think he could have been. I still think he's got a lot of talent. But second-round picks really hit or misses, and you can never really count on a second-round pick to be, you know, as good as the first round. That's just how it is. You know, sometimes you'll find guys who are really first-round talent in the second round, but if you miss on a second-round pick, it's not the biggest deal because that's just how it is. But this year, you know, they took Denny Avdia, who somehow – fell to the Wizards in the draft, which I still can't believe. Um, you know, he's currently on the COVID list, but he's shown a lot of success this year. And he definitely seems like a guy who could play a huge part on this Wizards team down the road. And then he took Cassius Winston, who has not gotten a chance to play yet, but I definitely think he deserves one. It kind of frustrates me to see him on the bench and not playing because I feel like he's such a good leader. He's such a good captain. And he could be a really good backup point guard on this team moving forward. So we'll see what, what happens with that. But it's not just Scott Brooks. I mean, Tommy Shepard's played a huge part um, in a lot of the struggles too. And the main thing that everybody knows from this year is the John Wall trade. And last night we saw John Wall kind of return the favor to the Wizards. And, you know, they just couldn't stop him and prove he's back, he's healthy. And John Wall's still one of the top players in the NBA. He showed it last night. Wizards couldn't stop him. And, you know, he voiced that, which I think anybody who kind of gets done the way John Wall did – um, in Washington and traded away, they would they would have the same effect. So I had no problem with John Wall talking trash and you know playing the way he did because he deserved that and he deserved like he just proved to the Wizards he still got it and it was disrespectful to trade a first round pick and him for Russell Russell Westbrook. So now, um, and by the way, like I said before, I still think Russell Westbrook is going to be really good for this Wizards team moving forward if they hold on to him. And a lot of people are trying to move away from him now and say a lot of bad stuff, but I just disagree. Like Russell Westbrook's good and he still could be good. They just need to figure it out. And, you know, he's got to fit in a little better. Um, But back to Scott Brooks, uh, like I said before, I I believe he's got to go. Now looking at some of his statistics and stuff like that, as the Wizards coach, he has 152 wins and 179 losses. So he's below 500, which is just, you know, pretty bad given the fact with all the talent that he's had. And this year um, has just shown me how bad of a coach he is. Uh, You know, some people defend him. I don't get it because a lot of people will say the Wizards don't have talent this year, but that just baffles me. Now I know they don't have too good of a big, especially with Thomas Bryant out, Um, but they just signed Alex Len, who's had some success in other places. Uh, They have Robin Lopez, who's pretty good defensively and will get rebounds. So they don't have a, a great big, but, if they were making a playoff push, they could have been one of the people to trade for one, but it's not it's just not going to happen, especially when they're three and 10 early in the year. And there's just no way to really get back into it. Now, I mean, there is a chance, but watching this team every night they play, it really does not seem like there's any chance they make the playoffs this year. Do they have the talent to make the playoffs? Yes. Now they're not the best team in the NBA talent wise, but definitely this team has the talent to be a top five Eastern conference team. And it's just frustrating to see, the way that they come out every week and get such big leads, compete, compete, compete. And in the final six to eight minutes, eight to six minutes of the game, just completely blow it and end up losing by double digits, which it's just incredible. Like to see, I, I can't believe it now. Like I said before, he was fired by the thunder following the 2014, 15 season when he missed the playoffs with them. And that was it. Um, he took a season off and then 
was hired by the Wizards. Now, when he was hired, uh, he had a great first season. He was got the four seed in the playoffs, um, beat the five seed Atlanta Hawks four to two in the first round, which was, you know, a great series to watch. John Wall was playing so well. Bradley Beal was playing well. Otto Porter, all those guys, you know, Martin Gortat, that Wizards team was really fun to watch. And they had a lot of good guys. And then they lost in a seven game series in game seven to the number one seed Celtics, which, you know, they went to game seven with the one seed as the four seed, which is incredible, especially in today's NBA with the way games go. So after that first year, you know, there was a lot of high praise for Scott Brooks and he really had a great year. You know, he had a lot of talent on that team, but a lot of people disagree. You know, the, the main difference between that team and this year's team is the big man, you know, Martin Gortat played so well and really was great on offense and really helped the Wizards on defense as well. So that's the big difference between those teams. But other than the big men, I don't see too much of a difference in talent. You know, this team guard wise might even have more talent uh, and small forward and Hachimura when he's back, you know, a guy who can play outside and then guard guys down low. So both teams, you know, like I said before, this, the Wizards team this year is capable of getting a top four seed or top five seed in the East moving on into a second year um, as the Wizards head coach, you know, he took a step back. Um, they were the eighth seed in the playoffs they lost in the first round to the Raptors, who were the one seed. Uh, so it wasn't too good of a year, but, you know, he still made the playoffs and, you know, competed with the one seed, won two games. So those were his first two years in Washington. And ever since, he has not made it back to the playoffs. Uh, you know, he's had a lot of issues dealing with John Wall's injuries, which definitely have hurt this team. <clears throat> but he just hasn't made adjustments, which is pretty frustrating watching the Wizards. And that that's the big issue to me and the reason I want him gone it's he he can't win he, he just seems like he can't win games anymore he can't make the playoffs has really struggled as the head coach and the, the Wizards need a new scenery I think um like I said before if they're gonna go move on from him and think they need a rebuild then trading Bradley Beal is probably the best thing but they should give Bradley Beal, Beal whatever he wants you know he's meant so much to this team over the past eight years, nine years since he's been here and whatever he wants, he should get, you know, he's reaching the peak. Um, you know, right now are his peak years, you know, he's going to have the best, best years of his career over the next few years and whatever he asks for, if he asks for a trade, they should move on from him. If he wants to stay in Washington, you know, they should try to get him help. Um, he should be on a team that's going to make the playoffs and going to go far in the playoffs. And that's why I think they need to give him whatever he asks for. You know, he's done so much. He hasn't complained, hasn't went out to the media and bashed the coaching or bashed, anybody with him he's such a good person and that, that's my point like I just think that the Wizards need to give him whatever he asked for now before I wrap this up like I said with the draft um with Scott Brooks being pretty good uh 2018 was a really bad year in my opinion for his draft um he drafted Troy Brown or him and Tommy Shepard really they drafted Troy Brown and Isuf Sanon who never played a game for the Wizards uh Troy Brown has really been disappointing you know when they drafted him there was a lot of there was a lot of things that said you know he could be a good player but he just really has not been what they expected um you know there were guys went after him Dante DiVincenzo Lonnie Walker Kevin Herter Devontae Graham Jalen Brunson Mitchell Robinson Gary Trent Jr. all those guys who I think would have a much better role on this Wizards team than he has um so it's definitely hurt you know he's a shooter and really has not shot the ball too too well which is kind of disappointing. And like I said before, all those guys I just named, you know, were either late first or early second round picks that the Wizards could have gotten in his spot. Um, now the sand pick, as I said before, second round picks are hit or miss. And it's, if you miss on a second round pick, it's really not the end of the world. So, I mean, drafting a guy who's never played a game for you is definitely not, not good, not a good look at all. Um, but he ended up being traded, uh, when the Wizards got Jerome Robinson, I believe. So, I mean, Jerome Robinson's been pretty good in Washington, and it was good to get rid of him, especially if he's still yet to play a game in the NBA. But other guys they could have take, taken, uh, Shake Milton, who's been great this year. He's been really good for the 76ers and actually has played well against the Wizards, which is kind of ironic. Um, and one pick after, Sant, uh, Hamadou Diallo, who's played really good this year as well. He, the Wizards could have taken him. You know, he was good in college. I, I just don't get it. So, you know, looking at that draft, the 2018 draft was definitely a bad year, but it seems like, you know, Shepard actually wasn't the GM at that point, I believe. 
So that was more uh, the past GM and Scott Brooks, you know. So 2019 and 2020, Shepard's definitely had a good, I believe, good effect on the drafts um, since he's been here. But like I said before, um, that John Wall trade has really just made Shepard look bad. And Scott Brooks this year with the team, the way the team's played and last year, uh, just it has really been bad for the Wizards. So, like I said, I think, you know, if Tommy Shepard can't figure this thing out and can't make a decision whether he wants to rebuild or, you know, add some stars to this team and make it a playoff contender, I think he's got to go. And then no matter what, I think Scott Brooks has got to go just because he's really shown me no improvements. He's actually gotten worse through his time here, and it's really been hard to watch. So, like I said, um, yeah, that, that's it for this video. Um, I, I really appreciate you guys watching. You know, drop your comments, you know, I love or opinions. I know a lot of people probably like Scott Brooks. Some people might. Um, some people might like Tommy Shepard, but I know a lot of Wizards fans have complained over the years. So I want to hear, you know, what you guys' opinion is on this and um, what you think the Wizards should do moving forward. So, uh, yeah, please leave a comment. Um, if you enjoyed the video, a like would be appreciated. And I would really appreciate if you guys subscribe to the channel. Um, thanks again for watching this and be on the lookout for some more Wizards videos coming forward.